coming right there. Oh, hey guys, we're here at the Overland Challenge. Hey, I'm gonna tell you all about it, but before I do, I wanna give a big shout out to our sponsors, Nutrient Survival, uh, Survivor Filter, and Sportsman's Guide. We had a bunch of other little sponsors helped us out with some other stuff, True Timber, a bunch of other companies, but my big three sponsors for this, we couldn't do it without them, Nutrient Survival, a survivor filter and sportsman's guide hey guys they support us they sponsor us i'm asking you guys to support them all right hey guys i know uh, a lot of you have been following us when we did the overland challenge uh, a few weeks ago and uh down in uari national forest we tried to put a bunch of stuff out on Facebook and Instagram, but we were, we were busy. We we're having a great time. So we brought Chad out there to record everything for us with his camera. He tried to capture what he could while we weren't up in the woods. Day one, we showed up. We set up our campsite here. Uh, this was pre-mud. We had us a nice little campsite. Dan brought the most beautiful kitchen on the back of his truck. Mickey had his camper. Uh, camping trailer, everything. I had my new Hive trailer. We had us a probably the best campsite I've ever been in in my entire life. Uh, we showed up um, first morning. We were here on the playground. And we had all these little events. We started off doing blind driving. That's where you put the passenger in the driver's seat. We had uh, Chad Mormon driving blindfolded, literally blindfolded, and I had to talk him through an obstacle course. Five minute, uh, five second penalty for hitting the engineer tape. Uh, 30 second penalty for hitting a actual stake. Uh, and then one minute penalty for breaking a stake. We bumped a stick. We got a 30 second penalty. Mickey and Dan, they broke three or hit three. Anyways, averages out. Uh, the, the big deal is we were the first, literally that was, we were the first ones to do it at all. Uh, from there, we went off to tomahawk throwing, believe it or not, projectile weapons. We even had water balloons that you had to shoot with a slingshot, and then cornhole. We took turns doing different things. You, know, you guys know I suck at cornhole, so I did this little meh, meh toss. It went right into the hole. Why? Divine intervention. Toss that second one. Meh. Worked the first time. Tossed the meh the second time. Worked great. Went right in. We're not gonna get very many uh, points there because my, you know, my knife fighting instructor, right? I had Emery there throwing the Tama chickens and all they did was just, they laughed at him, bounced off the wood. Dan, the man, he got one to stick. Uh, the rest of us, not so much. Michaela, uh, Mickey's daughter was doing awesome launching water balloons. You can tell her dad does artillery cause she was bracketing to and fro, near and far. Uh, everywhere except for where the points were. Uh, next stage after that, believe it or not, they had drunk camp building. They have these drunk goggles, two pair. And uh, I put one pair on, I forgot who did the other, the other set at the same time. And then you had one guy that could talk you through it. And uh, we had to set up a camp chair, folding camp chair, set up a uh, porta potty, a porta potty tent and a whole takedown tent. We did okay on that. I've never worn drunk goggles before. The year prior, we had uh, blind goggles that you could see under, and we cheated our asses off. This time, uh, the drunk goggles kind of fuck you up. They do. I got car sick. From there, we went on to the next one. We did. It was uh, winching. Uh, no, it was actually changing a tire on a vehicle. No big deal. And then you had to plug it. Uh, no big deal. I, I actually teach that class. I had Chad Mormon, the guy that taught me there. So we actually did good on that one, but it's not a hard task. It's not. So um, not saying we made, made points, lost points there at all. From there, we went to 
um, litter building where you had two uh, expedient litters for moving a casualty. Two two by fours, two big huge tarps, roll of 550 cord and a roll of duct tape. And I like, they must be thinking we're gonna make some really fancy shit. We went old school army, fold the tarp on the two sticks, haul us downhill, haul us uphill with the casualty. Worked out great for us. Last one in the morning, it kicked our ass. High lift jack winching. If you've ever used a high lift jack as a winch, there's a reason why you're willing to spend all your wife's money on a winch for the front of your vehicle, because it sucks. We use chains for less stretch factor. Um, yeah, you had to go uphill. How many feet? 45. 45 feet. You had half an hour. Half an hour to do it. We went and we went and we had to take turns. Rowing, uh, rowing, stay out of the V's, swapping back and forth, adjusting like, cause we only had so much chain. Kicked our ass. Uh, we finished with like 17 feet still to go. Nobody finished it. One team got within like seven and a half inches. But uh, again, we were the first ones to go. And uh, literally that was, we were the first ones to do that. We had a brand new high lift jack. From there, that got us through the morning. We went and knocked out lunch here. We, we even, uh, I, I introduced the team to nutrient survival. We got the, we, we did some of their survival food. I felt like I was up on the mountain in Afghanistan. Afternoon though, we were back in our element. We went up to the Uwari National Forest. They gave us all these points we had to find on the map. So we're in the, we're in the shoots getting ready to launch. So you're launching so many teams and the guy's reading task condition standards, you have got to find all the points. There are three bonus points. Like, there's no time limit. He's, I'm like, what, what, there's no time limit? There is no time limit. Oh, there's no time limit. He's like, there is no time limit. So what did we do? Sure, we'll take our time, let's have fun with it. We got up there, Mickey found us all the fun rock trails. We had a good time, but because there's no time limit, We'd come up on, a, there was a group of Porsches, a group of Mercedes up there, all these Toyotas. We come around one corner coming up the rocks and there is someone in a little VW station wagon, but because it says four wheel drive on his little dial, he decided he wanted to go to off-road park with it. Wife's crying, all his kids crying, hung up on the side of the mountain, exactly where he does not need to be, and all the local rednecks are just driving by them, laughing, driving off. So we're not on the clock, not time to vent. So we stop and uh, we do the good Samaritan thing. We helped them, uh, we set up an off angle winch and we, we had a great time, we did. We had a great, great time, got them out of there. From there, we went to one of the bonus ones. We did it last year, it's called the bowl. It's a big, deep bowl of water. Mickey launched his brand new Gladiator through that thing and he pushed a bow wave of baby shit like you'd never seen. This mud was so ugly. <coughs> he started saying it over the radio, don't do it, don't, I didn't hear him, I'm deaf. So um, Chad's out taking pictures, Emery's out saying I'm gonna film and Emery's like, go push a wave, push, yeah, yeah. So um, you've seen the pictures. <laughs> You've seen the video. Yeah, um, the good thing I put the snorkel on the motor, whole engine compartment's filled with baby shit. Um, yeah, there's more mud inside the vehicle than there is outside right now. From there, we, we went got the rest of our points. We actually met up with this old granddad who literally brought all his grandkids out for one week in Uwari National Forest. He had everything from little eight-year-olds on little 50 uh, two-wheel motorcycle, 50 cc's, all the way up to his 11-year-old daughter who thought she was 25, riding a, a four-wheeler. We they had everything, 18. It was cool to see a granddad out there with just his grandkids, no cell phones, actually enjoying America, the beautiful outdoors. Uh, we started doing some other trips. We weren't in a rush. And uh, we we were actually, we did the last few points uh, right at sundown, sunset, got a little dark. So we come rolling back in here. We knew the campfire, uh, bonfire wasn't gonna be till seven. We didn't care about the bonfire anyway. So we just rolled in, right? We got lights. 
came in, went to go check in. Hey, we got all our points. And they're like, well, doesn't matter. You, you had to be here by 6 p.m. Like, what? So anyways, um, yeah, we, we got dinged. But we had a great day, great day of wheeling. It's always good to get together with Dan and Mickey and just get away from the house, get away from the internet, get away from emails, and just get behind the Jeep and tear shit up. Day two, we get up and um, we go to an actual off-road training center up the road, Grand Overland. Uh, and we did their off-road training school. They train a lot of military units nearby here. <coughs> and they had set up like a round robin of things. The first one was build a bridge, believe it or not. We show up and they've got a ditch. They got a bunch of telephone poles there. They read us a little thing. Um, you got to get both all, all your vehicles across it. You have to use a snatch block. You have to use a chain. Logs have to have at least three straps holding them together. And, um, and they told us, like, look, one team actually tried to manhandle it yesterday, and uh, it didn't work out very well for them. We know how to do it. If you've got a winch on your vehicle, you can literally do that with a bunch of Girl Scouts, a bunch of brownies. We knew how to do it, but I had Emery, I had Mickey, I had Chad, I had me. We had guys with good strong backs, so we muscled these telephone poles into place, ratcheted them all into place, and we shot across that thing. And they were uh, literally like, you guys blew it out of the water fastest time, hands down. They actually came up to us last night, and uh, the one of the head judges there is an old JSOC guy, and he said he was impressed at how well we worked together, the ground guiding and everything, and uh, just teamwork. We hit it like a military mission, and we accomplished it. From there, we went to what was called a stuck vehicle. Dropped down into a, bit, a ditch. Of course, we bribed the, the judges ahead of time with some chocolate-covered espresso beans. Um, we get down in there, there's a, a little uh, Toyota stuck in a ditch. He's got his trailer behind it laid up on its side, and the driver's not there. He's drunk up in the woods, yelling, trying to find his wife. You go to get in the vehicle, the vehicle does not run. So we have to troubleshoot it, and it's got a flat tire. You're not allowed to touch the trailer by hand to move it because it's filled with molten magma or some silly shit like that. Okay, no big deal. Run the winch from the front of my vehicle. Use the winch, uh, winch the trailer back on the all, uh, all two wheels. Uh, Chad and Mickey and Dan, they're already up checking out the vehicle. Uh, Chad Mormon under the hood found loose battery connection. Rechecked that, got it running. We were expecting to have to pull fuses and uh, serpentine belts, everything that Chad made me do at T1G. That's what I was expecting. This was, a, this was a cakewalk, it really was. Had to move the vehicle, um, change the tire. We had a couple hiccups there because we got a lug wrench, uh, a socket actually stuck on a muddy lug nut. That's real world, that's Mickey, the, I mean, that's, that's Murphy on your back. We got through it, we got across the finish line. And again, we, uh, they came up to us later on, they're like, uh, nobody did it that way. Uh, we were, a little mad you did it that way, actually, but you blew everybody out of the water. Okay, cool, not bad. From there, we go to station three, and uh, they've got this, uh, you got two judges at each one. They've got the, the naughty librarian with her glasses and a ponytail, and she reads you this scenario. She's out with her little Mercedes four-door, and it slid down a hill. All we've got to do is winch her up. Do, basically, it's an off-angle, uh, winching operation, you got to get it past the finish line, not a big deal. We had just done that the day prior in the forest, literally the exact same thing. We put Dan behind the wheel, everybody worked together as a team, snatch block off the tree strap around the tree, easy. And then it was time to lower it back down. Could we have been faster just running uh, the Jeep back and forth? We could have, but that's not how you do it. So we, made, we could have made up a little time. We didn't, we did it the right way there. From there, it had just started raining, just getting a little bit slick. The last challenge of the morning was 
a uh, driving track only a couple hundred meters long called don't or don't no tire spinning so basically you've got to do this track that's all articulating and tight corners you're not allowed to spin a single tire if you do 30 second penalty if it goes around more than twice it's like one minute penalty all this stuff <clears throat> mickey went first it's it's a it's a jeep rubicon gladiator he's got uh lockers he's running 37s front ends unlocked he slid through the whole thing did not spin a tire at all uh, we got in behind him same thing, locked, came all the way through. We did not spin a tire. And they got judges literally watching each tire. Got out of it, and they're like, well, you know, this thing was supposed to be done without lockers, but we didn't tell the guys yesterday, so we had to let you guys do it. Me and Mickey were like, well, shit, we'll do it again. We went back, back through it a second time, uh, unlocked, and same thing, Mickey didn't spin a tire at all. Again, we're not on the time now, so we go a little bit, not on the clock, went a little bit slower. <clears throat> I had Emery riding up front the second time, not Chad, when I'm trying to show him how to pick a different line, um, so when you can't lock those wheels, I over-articulated my front end a little bit, literally locked that, disconnected sway bar out, and when it came back down, I actually bent my front sway bar connector 10 inch connector from Metal Cloak, folded it right over my uh, track bar. Not that big a deal, we were out, didn't affect us on the time. The cool part though was I carry spares, spare fluid for the diff, spare fluids for everything, extra uh, fuel filters, all this stuff, and including parts that often break. Mickey didn't miss, uh, he didn't miss a, a drop of a dime, didn't even ask, he immediately pulled out his tools, as soon as he heard I had a spare, Dan helped him out. We got us a nearby ramp. Uh, they were like a NASCAR pit crew, man. I'm just thankful to have an awesome team that aren't assholes that want to just stand around, drink beer while I fix my own shit. Everybody worked together as a team. That got us to lunch. Uh, we actually went and did local chicken uh, for lunch, and it wasn't that incredibly terrible. From there, uh, afternoon, we went to uh, the LFD Land Navigation Challenge. Now, it's a tight course. It would be cool, and we did this two years ago. Our gripe two years ago is if you're going to give somebody a strip map, if you've ever been in the military, if you draw out a strip map, the first thing you do is you put a North Seeking arrow, something for reference. Then you also put something for scale, a reference. Now, it's all to scale, but they didn't give you any marking what the scale was. And I'm pretty sure that's the biggest bitch everybody has here. And so many added fire breaks, added turns. We ended up starting off on a black diamond trail that nobody should have any gone anywhere near. Got poor Mickey up front with 37s. He's hung up on a rock that's as tall as his Jeep is. And we're like, wait a minute, you know, they're supposed to be able to do this with 31s on a taco. That's when we're like, hey, we're on, the, we're on the wrong road. We got turned around. Um, once we realized what the scale was, we blew through it as quick as we could and uh, pulled back in the final parking lot. Having to track it with this new app called OnTrail that BF Goodrich uh, came up with. It's still a beta version, so it doesn't track very, very well. They actually dinged us at the end because we pulled up at the stop point where the final point was actually a tree about 100 feet away in the field, uh, literally. What? All right, so um, that got us through that. All right, no big deal. Uh, after that, they actually did some thinking of the, the uh, sponsors. Lots of good sponsors here, Overland Tents and Recovery Gear, all kinds of stuff. Uh, then they hit us with a fucking cooking challenge. Cooking challenge, really? Uh, it's okay, we knew it was coming, right? So they give us a pack of Italian sausage, a sweet potato, an onion, and an apple. Dan the man gets on the internet, pulls out of the heavens the number one recipe for Italian sausage, sweet potato, uh, onion, and apple casserole. And uh, my wife let me take one of the Thanksgiving Day red tablecloths, three wine glasses, two bottles of dead red that we put the Overland Challenge uh, logo on the, on the bottles. 
couple wine glasses, even had a candle on a candlestick that Emery couldn't keep lit for nothing. Uh, they finally come to the visit, and um, we had a good time. We did. Emery kept them entertained, showing them how to make traditional Turkish coffee on our big fire uh, bonfire that we had here in our campsite. Uh, we ended up taking second place in the cooking challenge, and uh, it, I think it was the wine. That and, uh, but all in all, good stuff. Again, uh, fine, rained all day. It didn't rain uh, while we were here. We had a great, great evening. We got hit with rain again about 3 a.m. No big deal. Uh, a couple awnings blew away, not ours. We got a great campsite. Uh, my hotel room right here, I'm here to tell you, besides the pitter patter of raindrops on the roof, I was a happy camper. I made poor Chad and uh, Emery sleep out in the, t I'm not sharing a queen size bed with Emery. No, not gonna do it. So uh, we show up this morning, we start breaking down camp. Our last two challenges, one of them is this teamwork thing. You gotta walk two, two guys at a time. They got track pads with rope and you've gotta stand one guy in front, one guy in the back and you've gotta left, right, left. Right, and you've got to go like 50 meters, switch with your other teammates, they got to go 50 meters back. If you fall, you've got to go all the way back to the beginning. Total pain in the ass, totally gay, totally the kind of stuff they like to do overlanding. All right, that's what they like to do. The final challenge though, the final challenge was called the balance beam. They had two basically railroad ties, long railroad ties up on an I-beam kind of like a seesaw and you're one vehicle at a time. Once you move, you were allowed to move the logs where you wanted them. You could have one ground guy, one driver. You could not back up. So once you lined up the logs, once you got on it, you had to get up and balance the vehicle. If it tipped forward, you were disqualified. If you fell off, you were disqualified. If you backed up, you were disqualified. Uh, for, first team, spinning their wheels, uh, fell off. The team after us actually fell off. A lot of teams were falling off, but a lot of teams, a lot of teams were there watching Chad Mormon uh, ground guide me the same way he did it in school. And I'm here to tell you there's a lot of people taking notes because he did it textbook, brought my front end up, lined up the rear end. Uh, the problem with bringing the rear tires up is a lot of times they'll spin and you, we're not allowed to back up. So Knowing that ahead of time, the motto of off-roading is as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. We used a little bit of momentum right there to get those rear tires up. He inched me forward. We balanced that Jeep. First Jeep of the day to be balanced. Uh, I don't know how many other ones did it after us. We're done. We are done. Um, it's been a great time. We, I know we lost about 500 points. I think you lose lose a point for every minute you're late and we were two and a half hours late so i, I may have to give back my t-shirt i don't know what place we placed in but i'm here to tell you this was a great great event we made some great buddies uh guys literally the campsite right across from ours they they, they come up they're like hey man we love your channel other guys we had patrons and other viewers people that have taken classes some of you guys actually showed up to hang out with us at night I'm going home with a refrigerator filled with bottles of moonshine because between Moody 2, uh, Disgruntled Bear, and everybody else showing up with uh, we we had a good time. It's been a great challenge. I want to give a big shout out to Chad for coming, being bored to death, and filming this whole thing. Big shout out to uh, Mickey and Dan for uh, partnering with us and my navigator and co-navigator, Chad Mormon and Emery Morgenstern, international man of mystery, for providing us with the best Turkish coffee I've had all morning. Anyways, that's the whole weekend in a nut row. I don't know what place we, I don't know what place we got. I'll put it underneath the video. Y'all take care, we'll see you next time. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.